Welcome to a Detroit Lions rebuild franchise on ESPN NFL 2K5. I chose them as they're one of the lowest ranked teams in the game. Their power ranking has them just one above last place. Let's see if Steve Mariucci is up to the task of a rebuild. The coaching goals is to get more than 8 wins, considering we're ranked 31st that's asking quite a lot. Secondary goals are to improve the team's rush defense and to achieve a rank of at least 25 in the league. I don't know what the rush defense was last year, also a rank of what? Like a power rank? The primary goal seems to be shooting for the moon while the secondary is a little bit more realistic. I think we can get that one. Now let's move on to the roster. Corey Slicinger is the only elite player on the team, 10 year vet. Mauler, I don't expect too much production out of the guy, he's a fullback after all. He might be useful in the short passing game as a check down, but I see him being more helpful blocking. Now the offense will be led by Joey Harrington going to his third year in the NFL, typically make or break year for a quarterback. I expect the leash to be longer with Mariucci being in his second season with the team, but we'll see. Now, Lions have a lot of running backs. That's not a good thing. Kevin Jones will be the starter. He's a rookie. The fact that a rookie is already better than anyone else on the team speaks volumes. Hopefully someone emerges as good depth behind him. Of course, we already talked about Corey Slicinger. He has no competition for his job because he's that damn good. The receiving core is pretty good too. Led by another rookie, Roy Williams, followed by Charles Roger and Ty Streets. If Harrington can't succeed with these weapons, then I don't know if he ever will. Honorable mention to Azahir Hakim. This offense is kind of stacked. Don't get me wrong, Steven Alexander isn't going to blow the top off of defenses, but the team has a lot of okay to good players, and some could be on the verge of being great. Question is, do they ever make that jump? If you know me, I live and die by the offensive line. Dominic Raiola is the anchor, and he's going to need a new contract at the end of the year. Woody is by far our best offensive lineman. He's gotten paid already, unfortunately. Laverne and Joyce? That's what happens when you pay that guy all that money. Harrington is going to have to share some of his cash with McDougal and Bacchus because these two will be the primary reason why he stays healthy this year. On the defensive line, we have some big boys and Sean Rogers and Dan Wilkinson's. Rogers is on the final year of his contract, but pending on the season, he's probably going to get re-signed. At defensive end, Porcher and Hall will be the starters. Going into his 13th year into the league, are going to have to look for a replacement for Porcher, but does he still have anything left in the tank? One of the two weaker positions on the defense, outside linebacker, Boss Bailey is looking very promising, but behind him, another rookie on this team will be starting, Lehman. They better hope neither of the two get injured because it won't be pretty. At inside linebacker, Holmes will be starting, solid performer. Behind him is Rayner. One thing I like to do in this game is create depth behind starters. Dre Bly and Bryant are clear starters on this team, but there's not much behind him. I think this team has a lot of good starters, but if someone goes down, season's over. Well, I didn't say everyone was a good starter. Brian and Bracey Walker, I'm pretty sure they're not brothers. That's all we got at strong safety. I do believe the secondary should be the strength of this team. Marion will be one of the reasons to why they'll be good. Veteran presence along Dre Bly, maybe 8 wins isn't asking for too much. Before we move to the regular season, Jason Hansen is the kicker, hopefully he plays well, while Nick Harris is the punter. There's not much I can add to that. Let's get the season started with the first game against Chicago. The Lions made it to the highlight reel, hopefully it was for a good reason. Joey Harrington had a hell of a game throwing 4 touchdown passes including this one to Hakeem. They won their season opener against the Bears 28-10. Can they win their home opener against the Texans? They made the news again for the second straight week. For some reason, the game glitched. Roy Williams is the quarterback, but Harrington had another great game. The Lions won 17-10, and they're rolling now. They even managed to crack the top five in the NFL power rankings. Remember, they were 31st when the season started. Can they keep the momentum going against the Eagles? They're once again being featured on prime time because Joey Harrington has broken out to start the year. This passing game is carrying this team to their first 3-0 start since 1980. 
They're going to have to work extra hard as a major injury happened. Dre Bly will be out for 11 weeks, not to be expected back until possibly week 15. It's not that often you see the Lions on top of the division, but it's still early. There's 13 games to go, but the NFL Power Ranking sees them as the best team in the NFL as of right now. After a bye week, can they stay on track and remain undefeated? No. But that's not to say the offense didn't try. Dre Bly being injured really hurt their pass defense. If he was healthy, who knows how this game goes. Now one of the biggest games of the year so far, Green Bay will be looking to claim the top spot in the division. But the Lions didn't let that happen. Harrington went toe to toe with Favre and showed he can be relied upon. We're getting closer to the halfway point, week 7, the Lions take on the winless Giants, who are no longer winless. You knew something like this was going to happen. They completely shut down the Lions offense, and this was the definition of a trap game. With that loss, the division is still up for grabs, nobody has a game lead on anyone for the top spot. They at least have the Dallas Cowboys this week, but after last week's demoralizing loss, who knows how this will end. After starting the season 3-0, they have now gone 1-3 with back-to-back -back losses against losing teams. One thing I'd like to point out, Wilkinson is out for 3 weeks, but Dre Bly is returning. Originally scheduled to return at the end of the season, he said screw it and he's back in. Just in time too because they take on the last undefeated team in the NFL in their own home. They're undefeated at home so far. So they made the highlight reel on primetime, this time not because of Harrington, but because Kevin Jones had a breakout performance, giving Washington their first loss on the year and I can already hear the Dolphins popping the champagne bottles. They've dropped recently in the power rankings but are still in the top 10 at the number 8 spot. They're 5-3 right now, can they do the same in the second half of the year? They completely got blown out by the Jaguars, that's with Dre Bly back on the team. Maybe injuries are playing a big part in it as so many starters are out for a game or two. That doesn't bode well for the Lions as this week is a must win game against the Vikings. Every time they've made the highlights on primetime, they've won, but today they'd lose in a close one. Their pass defense has been falling apart and it doesn't help that their offense has completely sputtered out. The Lions are now a game down from tying for the lead in the division, but there's still six games left, so anything can happen. To think this team started 4-1 and one and collapsed to go 1-4. and four. Now, they have to take on a high-powered offense of the Colts, where they actually went toe-to-toe -to -toe with them as well and pulled off a win. This team can go with the best of them, but also doesn't show up against the worst of them. With that being said, will this be another loss against a losing team or will the Lions finally show up to one of these games? The answer to that is they, they, they wouldn't show up. Another loss to a team that they should have done better against. The Lions keep going down further and further on the power rankings. I don't blame them, they're very mid. We're getting to the back end of the season in a must win game for the Lions against the Packers. They do just that, they swept the Packers this season, a tie back at 7-6. and six. When Harrington is good, he's good, but when he's bad, he just disappears and it shows. Three games left, Lions are on the bubble. I do want to point out that Washington isn't even in the hunt after starting 7-0. and oh. Lions are fighting tooth and nail to win the division. Everyone is tied except the Bears, of course the Lions hold the tiebreakers over the Packers in a one-on-one -on -one situation. Their only loss in the division is against the Vikings. If they win here, they can claim sole ownership for the division, but they would fall short in a shootout against them. The Detroit pass defense is going to need to improve if they want to win against the likes of Favre, Culpepper, and Grossman. With the loss, the Lions find themselves way out of the bubble, but only one game down from the division and two games left on the year. They still have a chance. They need to take care of business first against the Bears before thinking of the playoffs. Thankfully, they do just that, sneaking by them. They're still not playing well against teams that they should be blowing out. They're still not in the bubble for the playoffs, but with that win, that puts them one down from the Packers and tied with the Vikings, who holds a tiebreaker against them. 
It all comes down to the final game of the year. No guarantees to get in, even with the win, but it doesn't matter as the Lions choked their final game away, finishing the year at 8-8 eight eight after starting the first half at 5-3. The most disappointing thing about this is only one team finished at 9-7. The team that the Lions beat when they were red hot earlier, Washington. Had Detroit won their final game, they'd be in at the number 6 seed right now with the tiebreaker they own. Now Joey Harrington had one heck of a season, I believe we can win with him, unlike Ryan Tannehill in my Madden 25 rebuild. The problem is there are games where he just disappears, that could be due to his consistency. I think if that improves, we win more games. The rookie Kevin Jones almost got past 1,000 yards on the ground. The Lions don't run much, to be fair. They relied more on their passing game, but I think it was largely due to the inexperience of Jones. I expect him to get more touches next season. His backup, Sean Bryson, didn't see as much action as he probably should have due to the passing game, but even that, the backups on this team aren't going to wow anyone. You know who did surprise people? Ty Street. He led the team in receiving yards while being third on the depth chart. That's pretty impressive. Roy Williams was supposed to be the guy that outshined everyone. He did make the biggest plays on the team. I do expect a huge jump in production for him next season. Charles Roger put up similar numbers to his rookie season. Only difference being that he had more playtime this season. He has all the tools to be good. I think this receiving core can be amazing. Let's not forget that Stefan Alexander turned into an underrated player this season. If his history has taught me anything though, it's that he's not going to do much next season. This is why I gave Hakeem an honorable mention. In Madden, this man was speed, but in reality, he was always a pretty good player. Corey Slicinger was pretty good in the passing game, so he exceeded my expectation, that's for sure. The fact that Harrington was able to pass for almost 4,000 yards and 29 touchdowns and not have a 1,000 yard receiver speaks volumes about his ability to spread the ball around. There wasn't too much to get excited about on the defensive side of the ball. Earl Holmes led the team in tackles. He also had two and a half sacks and an interception. Tackles are a nice stat, but sacks are better, and nobody did it better than Robert Porcher. I was worried that Porcher had nothing left in the tank. He proved me wrong with 15 sacks. Problem is, nobody else on the team got past 5. Same thing with interceptions. A lot of people with 2 or 1, but no one was really a ball hawk player. I expected the secondary to be the strength of this team, and there were none. They were the weakness. Lastly, John Hansen had a pretty decent season for a kicker. Now, I don't know if those 4 kicks he missed cost the Lions any games, but I do know 80% accuracy is pretty good in this game. Nick Harris is also a player on this here Lions team. Anyone wondering, we finished right in the middle in the NFL Power Rankings, 16th, which I think is pretty good considering we started 31st. The Lions finished 5th in passing offense, while 27th in rushing offense. The glaring issue here is they finished dead last in passing defense. At least their rush defense was 11th in the NFL. Let's see if we can strive to get past that this season. Peyton Manning was the MVP of the year. Shocking, right? Joey Harrington almost gave him a run for his money too, but of course the Sheriff won. The Offensive Player of the Year, Steve McNair. I think Joey Harrington put up similar numbers to him besides completion percentage. This is giving me confidence that he might develop into one of these two legends. Defensive Player of the Year, Adam Archuleta. These numbers are good, but I don't think they're Player of the Year good. Offensive Rookie of the Year was Ben Roethlisberger. Similar numbers to Steve McNair, but his percentage was way lower. I wonder if this guy will ever amount to anything. Defensive Rookie of the Year, DJ Williams. Again, these numbers don't scream Rookie of the Year, but I'm just going to pretend that every other rookie sucked. Finally, the rushing leader is Andrew and James. The fact that Manning threw the ball as much as he did and James still carried the ball 350 times tells me their defense is either really good or really bad. Let's go to the playoffs, wild card round. The Packers must be really happy that the Lions didn't get in because if they did, they'd be taking Washington's spot. Detroit swept them this year. Packers don't have to worry about that now. Green Bay ended up beating Washington, who started 7-0, remember? So far, every team with a better record won their playoff game, including two wild card teams in New York and Carolina. The divisional round is now starting. It's insane to think a 12-4 team couldn't get a bye week, but that's what happened to the Colts. You're welcome, Kansas City. Even with an extra week to prepare, Kansas City, Atlanta, and Philadelphia couldn't get it done. New England was the only team with a bye to win, which means we are now to the Final Four. 
who gets in. It looks like a Super Bowl 31 rematch is going to happen. Both Green Bay and New England move on to the Super Bowl. You know, someone said to do a Packers rebuild. I don't think they need a rebuilding. Though they did lose in a close one to think the Lions could have eliminated them before they even got going. Corey won the MVP. Good for him, always liked them. So year two is about to go underway. Do you want to see more of this series? Press the like button. It lets me know how much you enjoy it and want to see more. The more likes, the quicker I try to get the videos out. Subscribe to keep up with the latest videos I do and I will see you all in year two.